Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching, and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Watching My Stories. I'm Danny. I'm John. And I had forgotten what you, we were doing. You hit the button and went blank. Yes, that's completely. All right. That's all right. We took a week off again, and now I'm just, what? Are, what is this? And, and now it's like the first time we're ever doing it. Who am I? What's yep. going on? What? So what do we do here? Yeah. So, yeah, we were off last week. I just felt like after premiere, like the big premiere week of fall TV, I just felt like I didn't really have a lot to talk talk about. I didn't go to the movies and I just felt like it would be silly to be like, oh, I watched the first show of this. I watched the first show of that. And there's not enough content there to really say anything. So I was like, let's just kind of skip it and we'll come back fresh with something good this week. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Well- Hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully. We'll talk again in an hour and see what happens. <laughs> well, we'll be talking, talking for, now. Yeah, for the hour, but... <laughs> okay, you, know. you guys stay here. We'll be back in an hour, and we'll let you know what we came up with. Yeah. Ready? Go. Click. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back. That was awesome. <laughs> okay Uh, you should have been there yes so we're actually doing this uh, a day earlier than normal because uh today we went to see a star is born Mm -hmm. and i kind of requested to be able to talk about it fresh and i didn't want to have to wait a day to talk about it the producers asked us to come in a day early yeah yeah that's me that's that's you that's me bless you thank you (laughs) Okay, so, right. yes, so it is Friday, A Star is Born came out today, mm-hmm. and I have been waiting for this for months, I, I was on a daily ritual of watching the trailer, mm-hmm. uh, then they graced us a week ago with the whole mu- music video and song of Shallow, mm-hmm. and I outplayed that, and then we got to the movie this morning, so I'm going to let you go ahead and kind of start the conversation Okay. And let us know what you thought. Oh, man. No pressure. Because, yeah, I mean, I think you guys, look, first, guys, settle in, because I've got a lot to say about this movie, and uh, if you don't want to, like, any sort, if you haven't seen it and you want to, you probably don't want to listen to this, because I'm just going to get into it. It's it's just... She's probably going to yeah. spoil the whole thing. Come back and listen to this, this these 20 minutes or whatever it's going to end up being after you've seen the movie. But see, that's the weird part. I thought we, partly what we were doing was to help people if they wanted to see it or not. No, most of the time on here, you know, podcasts, at least for me... And I think other people, you only go and listen to ones that you want to listen, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you know what you want to listen to. Okay. So that's up to them. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, first of all. <laughs> that was our dog. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, Roxy's in the studio with us. So you might hear a dog from time to time. And... Snorts, growls. Yeah. It's late in the day. Uh, it's, it's dog walking time. So she's at her favorite window and, and she will probably see other dogs and let you know that other dogs are around. So we apologize in advance. Um, okay. So I, so I really liked it. I really, really liked it. Okay. So first off too, this was one of those ones where he was undecided if he really wanted to go see it. I bought my ticket a couple of weeks ago cause he was kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. And then a couple of days ago you changed your mind and you I said did. you know what i think i want to go i did i i saw the preview again a couple more times and i decided you know i really like bradley cooper i really like lady gaga you were already going it was my off day mm-hmm. right for work um why not and <laughs> there's always the popcorn and soda that you know even though standing in line for popcorn he was like you sure you don't want to see venom <laughs> <laughs> well you know <laughs> which i do want to see but not above this one so okay. yeah so that was playing in the theater right next to us at, at the same time so i'm like eh. yeah. but no i you know okay so anyway yeah, yeah so i really really liked it okay <sighs> i was hoping that i would love it okay and i don't think that i do i really really liked it okay and i would see it again but it w- so here's the deal for me the first half was perfect yeah spot on yeah. exactly what i wanted it to be yes and then the second half it drifted it got a little bit long to me uh a couple things that they didn't necessarily need to go through here goes our dog 
So it just started to get to be a little bit long. Uh, I thought it went through several scenes that added time to the movie that maybe weren't necessary. Uh, I felt it could have been shorter. Um, and I, you know, I was hoping and hoping that the inevitable wouldn't happen and it did. So I was kind of disappointed that it did. Okay, so right there, let's point out, this is the fourth version of this movie. and <laughs> It just went back the other way. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen, even though you, you know, yeah, it was inevitable. You could tell. Well, just the way things were going, and especially after that dick manager had the conversation with him, you're right. like, that's going to put him over the edge. Right. He just knew it was some way, somehow, um, uh, you know. Right. He told the story about the belt, and then he had a belt, and it's like, Fuck. damn it. It's, there it goes. Mm-hmm. And then that, that just, it, it, I guess I'm one of those people that when a movie takes a turn and even though it's it, it may be even expected or whatever if it makes me mad or pisses me off i lose it for the movie you want a happy ending i always want a happy yeah. ending i'm kind i'm that kind of movie goer i and i i understand that there are movies where of course that's what i want <laughs> she's sorry I sorry just... roxy's seeing a lot of things um oh and but there are movies where i really hope for the not happy ending I know you do. See, this is where you and I differ. You don't mind the 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 always real thing or whatever adds, the most, real. <laughs> adds the most emotion or whatever the case is. I go to be entertained and I want I want to be I just I like to be entertained and I don't right. necessarily want the real. Right. Right. Um, but you can't go into a movie ex- like this expecting it. I mean, you know, this is a melodrama. This is. This is what we haven't had in a long time. You mean a melodrama? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not. You really did. You really expect that it was gonna have a happy ending, uh, or did, is it because you really didn't know? I did, I had no idea. Okay. First of all, as you just said, we I'd never seen any of the others. I didn't know how the storyline goes. I don't know if this one followed the storyline. Um, you know, to a T. If it's like a, a it did. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that happened in in the movies okay right? the others uh so i just it was in front of me for the first time and i went with it at face value right. and that just it was so disappointing to me that it knocked it back in my mind a little bit now having said that i know how this sort of thing goes and like a week from now or the first <laughs> time i see it on the movie right. channel i'll right. be like God, that's good. okay you know what that was that was integral to the story and had to happen and you know what it's it's okay now right. or maybe I'm done grieving or something <laughs> that you know whatever the case is I've come to terms with it and it's right. okay that he spoiler alert he dies in the end um so you know it, it was good now I thought Bradley Cooper did a fantastic job with the direction of the movie yes and and there was a lot of it that felt like a really really good music video to me um I think Bradley Cooper's character is supposed to be kind of a Chris Stapleton type thing. You know, it was really hard for me. So one of the things I I got a little bit confused about the movie was trying to figure out whether he was rock, country rock, country. Doesn't matter. It it doesn't except she comes in and she kind of fits in and then all of a sudden becomes poppy. Okay, yeah. Well, we got to get to all that. You're jumping around all over the place, so... You know, okay. No, well, that's oh, how I. I know that's how I go. That's okay. I'm gonna take control again <laughs> so that we can get to some structure here. So the point is, you liked it. I've been overruled. Kind of, sort of. No. Okay. Uh, okay. My final assessment. I really, really liked it. Okay. Even with the things that I it irritated me. Okay. So here's there's a lot that I need to like break down of this movie because it is one of those things. Like my mom texted and said, "Did how was the movie?" And I wrote back, "Good!" Exclamation point and she said only good and i said i i there's i can't just give it a word like i wouldn't say it's fantastic because you do come out with tears in your eyes like i Mm -hmm. don't feel like that's a description so i have to kind of break down all the different things about it there's a lot to unpack there yeah so let's do the technical stuff first because that's the most boring yeah bradley cooper did an amazing job co-writing this and and directing it Mm -hmm. directing it yes the music stuff was was a very well done yeah. music video. The rest of it was so rich in its colors and tones mm-hmm. that it felt actual it didn't feel like a movie. The colors were the colors that I see in my daily life looking outside. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yes, so I it do. felt like it was so real yeah. and it was like 
I was right there with yes. them. Yeah. There was not a separation at all, which again put us right there with them and loving these characters mm-hmm. again. So I thought he did a really that was a good choice right there to to make it so real. Yeah, he has a great eye. It, it, you know, I could see so much of the amazing directors he's worked with, Clint Eastwood and and David Oh, what is his name? Uh, you want David O. Oh, Russell. Yes. Um. So you know, you can tell he he's just he's worked and he's been on these sets learning and 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 being such a student, um, mm-hmm. which was great. But uh, but on the same note, this was him entirely. Like yes. you could tell this was his style and his vision. Um. I loved in the writing what he did was, and and from what I've heard of the other movies but that doesn't really even matter what you almost expect out of sort of a stereotypical story the the rock star the the star of whatever (laughs) sorry the star of whatever meets a woman you know you almost in your head think she's going to be the ingenue the naive the this the that um but but (laughs) she quickly dispels that but Allie was not from the very beginning and i loved that it wasn't just their first night together, she punches someone out. But the first night together, she punches someone out in his honor. And that, you know, so she punches someone out in his honor. And then, and she also defends him in the grocery store. Yeah. You know, when someone's taking a picture of him. Like, <laughs> so that's the, that's within hours of meeting him. She's not a flower that needs to be protected. You no. know, she's protecting him just as much. And she does that throughout the entire movie. So I loved her character that she was very equal and Mm -hmm. it wasn't Mm -hmm. um you know and i think a lot of that has to do with the ages that they are you know these aren't these weren't young people these were people who have lived a life and and have experience yes so i love that so the writing was fantastic and in all the way around um the then then next layer down acting bradley cooper was amazing he was directing yourself is not an easy thing to do right. as well as change you know the register in your voice and sing and learn instruments and yeah, all the stuff so, that he's not familiar with right um we'll get to the song the music in a bit too uh he he was broken you know and and we learn along the way why um but he's also a nice guy under it Mm -hmm. and we learn that in those that first meeting of them um and he plays that kind of balance really strange and we can tell Mm -hmm. the fact that you can tell when he hasn't been drinking and then you can tell and it's not just about swaying and can't open his eyes it's it's the way he holds his head and the way he's and his posture changes and you can you can tell just like Ali says she can tell you know mm-hmm. and we we see that so he changes his acting but to me I mean truly the star of this is Lady Gaga she blew me away and I've been a fan of hers and I'm so glad she has this opportunity to show everyone everything that she can do mm-hmm. I thought she was so grounded real and real yeah. like and 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 I think we saw someone else who said this too that it seemed like there wasn't a script it seemed like they were going back and forth but this was scripted and they're mm-hmm. just that good at mm-hmm. acting in in everything that they were saying and she was and she should be she's trained in acting she's it's not like this is like you know a surprise but it's just it take it took us this long to get her on screen and this was a perfect perfect right. outlet for her because yeah. she got to be someone so different and and change all of that um so and then you go down to the little people <laughs> little people but um you know andrew dice clay in this is yeah. crazy i mean yeah. i had to point him out to you at you first. Did. Well, first i didn't recognize him and then he's so soft-spoken normal yeah for, he's, right. for him he's acting well he, he's acting yeah he yeah. was a guy you didn't mind right you know, and there are a lot of people who are fans of Dice Clay who, you know, the more outrageous and whatever, the more they like him. But for me, I really liked this Dice Clay. I kind of wish this was a guy <laughs> yeah. that was there the whole time and he was capable of being the Dice Man, right? Right. Like that was the acting, which, yeah. you know, you have to assume also is the case. Well, but for 25 years, that's all I saw of him. True. Right. Well, and, yeah, the whole and world. And that yeah. just got annoying to me. It's kind of like the Jim Carrey thing. It's, you know, you see a guy doing that, that physical acting for so long. That's all you see that that's all he is to you. Right. And and then he starts doing good stuff and you're like, well, pff, 
freaking finally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's really great. He's got, it's a small part, but he plays Allie's dad. So it's mm-hmm. nice. And then her best friend, assumingly Anthony Ramos, he was in the original cast of Hamilton. Um, mm. He's great uh, mm-hmm. as her support that she has. And then Sam Elliott. <laughs> you know what's so funny? So here's the funny thing. I didn't know Sam Elliott was in this movie. Okay. Right? And the first, after like, before you see him, before we're introduced to him, Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, man, Bradley Cooper is nailing (laughs) Sam Elliott. Right. Like, like he's doing a fantastic Sam Elliott mannerisms and cadence and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then in comes Sam Elliott as his older brother. And it's like, holy smokes. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. So he's playing his older brother, which is a little... (laughs) Well, it's because but, of a weird marriage, and, yeah. You know, in their lives, but he's also um, it's a great character. It's yeah, a, he's it's also a really is, great character, yeah, and like, there's a lot of information there. And he's just one. I mean, he, Sam Elliott made me cry. I think more than anything else. Yeah, did. yeah. Um, you know, and I always think of that Grace and Frankie quote when he was on Grace and Frankie, and they saw his picture online, and I forget who it was that said it, but said, you know. Only ten men can have can oh, have that mustache, that mustache, and nine out of nine of them are him. Yes. <laughs> so I yes. always I th- I thought of that halfway yeah. through the movie. And I started giggling. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so the cast is amazing. They're well directed. It's well written. Mm-hmm. All of that. Mm-hmm. Um. The music is amazing. So now we'll get to what we think it is. Here's here's also what I think was was kind of really smart to do you know it's present day the only reason we know it's present day is basically the automobiles in it and the mention of youtube no one ever pulls out a cell phone no one ever is talking about texting each other that's not true the one the the checker at the grocery store took his picture on a smartphone okay but i mean the main characters like well, okay, aren't, you okay. know we're so used to today like people are pulling sure. out their phones and we get to read their texts on the screen you know yeah, what i yeah. mean like we're used to that sort of thing yeah also so also so there's that and then also the clothes were very um you could easily say it starts in the 70s and goes to the 80s when she starts performing on her own she gets 80s hair and then you know like it was very much this very timeless type of vibe put okay. out there. Like, um, and I felt that way with the music. I felt like, you know, of course, m- today, I think Chris Stapleton, except with meaningful lyrics. <laughs> and you can hate me if you want, wow. but I don't really, I know. Sorry, like, Chris, if I, you're listening. I know his, I know his favorite, I like, like know his famous songs and it's about drinking or something, but you know. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of rock in there. It's got that country kind of backbone to it. Um, he's from Arizona. So the Arizona flag is flying, you know, and so you kind of get that vibe and she comes in and it's, it's very like folk meets rock meets country blend. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like it needs to have a label because that doesn't matter as long as it's good. And, you know, I don't, and I think that's the point almost so I had <laughs> wow. trying to like make my I was trying to keep it separate but you kind of got to go into it. So there are themes to this movie and that's the important thing. Outside okay. of all the technical stuff I've just talked about, the story and these themes are what's what I think is important. Yes, totally. And the main theme in my opinion is just love and the love between Jackson and Allie. Okay. And because we see them meet we see them fall in love. It's not a typical, like, you know, the first day they meet, they fall in love or whatever. He falls in love with her talent. Um, and then, and she's like, he's a drunk. I'm not, you know, like it's, it wasn't anything from the start. Um, but they do fall in love. We see this and it's not just a normal love. And the reason of that is because of the next theme is sacrifice. Uh She sacrifices certain things because of her love for him and he ends up sacrificing his life out of his love for her and there's nothing more um there's nothing bigger i think than than that and it's all because of love Mm -hmm. and the love that they have yeah i i'd agree with that I, i would throw in acceptance in there um she accepts him for for what he is because she loves him I understand that, but you can love somebody and not be able to accept what he is. He doesn't accept her when she changes. 
So well, that's and, so yeah, that's that's definitely another theme of and, this and, is that, you know, he like he even says at the end, I kept hoping you'd come back to you. And I think everyone goes through that in relationships. People change. You can't expect to stay the same as the day you meet, you know, that sort of stuff. But he did also fall in love with her talent and the words and the 12 notes she chose to pick, which mm-hmm. is which is my other theme is the love of of music in this movie and the way they talk about it and the way they talk about writing and how do you hear it and then especially those last few lines about it's just 12 notes and it's Mm -hmm. how you choose to arrange those 12 notes and say what you want to say and put it out there it's what you choose to say through the 12 notes to people Right. right. And even when he's telling her when she's about to go have her album opening and he's like, you know, again, it's just what you want to say. You have to say what you want to say and people are going to listen. And I love that because I do love music so much that I love I love that theme of this, that it kind of again, it's it's all intertwined. These things are all intertwined with all these people, the love for each other. But then they have this love for music. And when she changes, because she also doesn't have so much of self-love, so she's just, you know, she starts to get acceptance from other people, and she kind of changes and goes a little poppy. Um, he doesn't he doesn't do well with that. I didn't do well with that. I didn't either. That, that song on SNL was so awful. It was just so bad. Yeah, well, here's my problem with it. Um, are are you done with the the music and technical and stuff? Cuz um, I don't no, know. No, but go ahead. I don't know where this is going to go, but um I actually that was my biggest bone to pick with this movie was how she just she got her break, her individual break, her her chance to mm-hmm. go out on her own, and she just fell into whatever they wanted her to do. Mm-hmm. And I understand what you're saying about her not loving herself and just going with what people were wanting for you know so so they would accept her but she had found in performing with him the times that she had and the songs they wrote together and and growing with that she had to have found her her voice she found her voice and then suddenly she gets a chance to go out on her own and she just kind of sets that aside very easily it it wasn't easy she did you know say look i don't want to you know this is a little bit too much I don't want to lose, you know, what what is my talent? She said to him, uh-huh. she she stopped the dancers that one time and said, that's not me. You know, it's just and this is another thing I wrote down was it it definitely shines a light on the music industry. I'm not sure how much today, but this is something that's been going on, you know, forever that they take someone who is like Pink has talked about it and they take someone and they go, oh, you got to look like this and we need you to do this and you need to play this kind of music. And it just happens. And yeah. It's hard for, you know, for us to go, oh, well, she was with him. Well, because of this path, she rose above him. She became a Grammy winner and she became she was making more money and was more popular than he ever was. So and if that's what she wanted, she got it. I didn't think that's what she wanted. I don't think she knew what she wanted. I think, again, she would. She was so resolute on it's just never going to happen. I'm fine doing these drag shows and I'll be good with that. That, you know, someone approaches her and all of a sudden and, 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 and she's getting pictures taken and she's being told she's beautiful and all these things that she hadn't heard all her life. It's, you know, again, it's not worth really picking apart. It's more, for me at least, that's not the point of the movie. The point of the movie really is their trajectory together and kind of his decline and her uprise and then coming back together after he gets out of rehab and that, that weird state where, yes, yeah, you know, that whole speech that the manager gave him, um, I, that's where I had a bigger problem because I was thinking if that happened on the Grammys today, we wouldn't be looking at her going, I'm not going to be your fan anymore if you're still married to him. You know what I mean? Like it, no one would have that reaction. No, but that was him wanting him out of the scene. So that was one last thing he had to worry about. I know, but it, it was... It was just such a, it wasn't true in any manner. It didn't matter. He knew that, that, that Jack was an easy, there for easy pickings. He knew that it was whatever he said would have a huge impact because he was like, that was the first serious conversation he was having with anybody after getting out of rehab. Then do you blame Allie when she comes home and says to him, hey, we're canceling the European leg and lies to him about all about that why? stuff? No, I don't blame her for that. That was okay. her. 
that was her attempt. That's her sacrifice. That was her sacrifice right. to try to, to, to try to take pressure off of him and ease him back into life. Right. But then she doesn't because she says, why don't you come play with me tonight? And that was. That was supposed to be her last performance. So we don't know. No, she, I just mean that's that, not easing him in. You know, that's a tough place to be when you're an alcoholic. Well, absolutely. But I think that was. Look, she was committed to this. And I think I think she had fears about him being on uh, by himself. Sure. So I think that was her way of saying, thinking, okay, I have to do this thing. If I get him to come with me, I can kind of keep an eye on it. Right, right. Right. I think, you know, and look, no one, no one's just going to kill himself because their partner says, oh, I, I, I need you to be gone. You know what I mean? Like he, Mm -hmm. he was very depressed. He was very screwed up. The alcoholism stuff he had tonight as he knew his career might not be going on for very much longer. You know, there was a lot of stuff in him that would also push him to make such a decision, but in the romantic world that I want to live in, I love the idea of it being such a, a grandiose sacrifice for the love of his life. And that's where I like to leave it. Okay. Um, you know, I think I think there's a lot there. I think this could be a huge trigger movie for people who who have alcoholics in their life. I mm-hmm. think it was it was very real like that whole the Grammy scene. Oh my god, that was the most uncomfortable was, scene in a movie I've ever sat it, through. I mean, it was I've never been around anyone like that and I was triggered. Like I was really like Oh my god. And then I was getting squir- him into the shower and everything. It was awful. I was squirming in my seat so bad yeah. the whole time when he started to go up on stage with her that whole time i'm like oh my god i just want to get out of here yeah yeah oh it was so uncomfortable it really was and it but but so well done because well, again you you pivotal, get it right? yeah it, it, it had to happen for him that was him hitting bottom exactly so, yeah. yeah um and then the other warning i just want to give to people <clears throat> is that if you have tinnitus <laughs> oh, yeah. like i do uh there's there were a couple times i actually had to uh block my ears um if you ever saw the stupid movie baby driver where the guy has tinnitus and they just they think that ringing is a fun thing to sit through it's not um i don't blame bradley cooper at all but it's just you know well it's really because i knew if i if i sat there and listened that my my ears were just gonna go so bad that i wouldn't have you know it would have been a long day and and i i feel badly for you i do and anybody else with tinnitus but i don't have that yeah so you get it yeah i get it that was a way to make me appreciate what is what that's go what that's Mm -hmm. like i get it and it's unfortunate but yeah it, it it was yeah it went on a little long a couple times and i was like oh i gotta block my ears so just just (laughs) a little warning there yeah um okay so i think in a weird roundabout way we've talked for a half hour on this so we gotta wrap it up um okay it to me it's one of those just it's that i can't really put a word on it but all of this stuff together it's kind of like and this is a really weird thing but remember i said oh i haven't seen a movie like this in a while like yeah when i saw the trailer and it is that melodrama type thing where i was i i I haven't seen and honestly the feeling i come out of it and it's probably too side by side for some people is leaving las vegas and um when nick cage was the alcoholic you know there and he was he was Mm -hmm. drinking himself to death Mm -hmm. i love that movie and it was that same sort of feeling where you come out of it and you can't sit there and be like that was such a great movie because it's just so you know depressing and and it just was so um heart-wrenching this is not as heart-wrenching for most of the movie like you said in the beginning you're you're so high because you're watching these two that are in love and they're kind of coming the, together and the, the music is good. so good yeah um and 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 then it it does become this true drama of life and love and death and um but it's it's so well done and i loved all of the layers to it because again like you said I can't wait to watch this again because I think I'm going to pick up so many more things Mm -hmm. that are going to contribute to me building on how much I think I like the movie. Well, here's what I predict is going to happen when I finally see it for the second time. The parts that I really, really liked, I'm going to love. Right. I'm going to love the first half of the movie. And the second half and and the things that I didn't really care for, I'm going to end up really really liking so yeah. i'm i'm going to arrive at loving this movie yes. i know i am yeah but right now yeah six hours later <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot to take in i was drained when we left right i was exhausted yeah and i was i he was I, sweating I, I think i have a sweating problem <laughs> i think <laughs> i think i need, need to see somebody because 
every movie we go to now, I end up sweating. <laughs> it was all that Grammy scene, though. I blame that Grammy scene. Mm, it's a good one. Um, no, it was a very, very bad one. Okay, so after this first watch viewing and with all the emotions and still trying to take it all in, the best I'm giving it is four and three quarter stars. <laughs> you just can't give it that last quarter. Not yet. It's, and I don't know what that is, but there is something that's holding me back. Okay, uh, I'm giving it four stars. Okay. And even even though the the parts that I didn't like, I'm still giving it four stars. It's it's just so well done though. You can't yeah. you know, yeah. you just can't argue that and and if Lady Gaga doesn't win everything this is gonna be a really tough year for men, which shocker. Um, but you know, for women I think it could be a, a pretty easy road for her. Um from what I've got That's from what I can see. Mm, welcome to the world. Sorry. So, yeah. So that's, are we good? Is there anything else you wanted to say? On all, all I would say to wrap this up is, you know, despite the things I didn't like, it's a great movie. Go see it. Yeah. Definitely check it out. Yeah. The soundtrack is amazing. Oh, yeah. Since we've been home, I now have a new obsession. I was obsessed with Shallow, which is just a wonderful song and were my first tears in the movie when they sang that. Uh, but now my new favorite song is always Remember Us This Way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a tough it's one. A, it's, a, it's a classic Lady Gaga song. And when she's on stage playing the piano and singing it, it's just like, you know, there's no denying her and who she is and her talent mm-hmm. and everything. And it's mm-hmm. just a beautiful song. Yeah. She deserves everything she gets for this. Totally. As does Bradley Cooper. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yay. All right. Hey, what? Thanks do we have for anything, hanging in there. Do we have anything yes, left to talk about? Yes, now I'm going to go as quick as I can through everything else. Probably a good idea. Uh, other movie I watched uh, this week was Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary about Mr. Oh, Rogers and Mr. Rogers' sup- Neighborhood. You were supposed to wait for me. Yeah, I don't have time to wait for you all the time. Um, I'm giving it four stars. It was I was in tears through a lot of it um, because you just, at least for me, I forgot what Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was really like. Yeah. And but and again, you know, he started back in I think it was 60, 67 or 68. And the things that he addressed on there was really amazing. I mean, the Vietnam War and Kennedy's assassination and death and all this stuff. And at the same time that I'm watching the show Kidding with Jim Carrey, who plays like a type of Mr. Rogers person, and he wants to talk about some really deep stuff and like they won't let him on there. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rogers did all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I remember watching it. I don't remember watching it for very long. Mm-hmm. And what what was what I did laugh about was he was talking about how horrendous children's television was and they did this montage. It was all the shows I watched, you know, Transformers, you can't do that on television. Uh, you know, every cartoon that was on Saturday mornings yeah. back then that I watched, it was just like all these horrible things that he was talking about. And I'm like, yeah, I was watching that. Instead, I should have been watching Mr. Rogers yeah, neighborhood probably. because, you know, just hearing about his background and uh, his beliefs in children education and and um, the whole concept of his of, you know, you're special mm-hmm. just being you yeah. and and you don't have to do anything to be special. Right. And I didn't realize that then Fox blamed the millennials on him, which got me really angry. So they show a bunch of clips of everyone saying that it was him telling kids that you don't have to do anything in order to be special, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And so kids started getting trophies and all that, blah, blah, blah. The problem Mm. is Mr. Rogers has been around since the 60s. There's been a lot of us that have come up watching him. So, no, sorry. It's not his fault. You can't blame him for the overreactions of parents. Right. And even so he gave a commencement speech back then when this was all happening and he said look the the my point is you you can be loved by the people who are supposed to love you without you having to do anything you know and that that was all he wanted everyone to know is that you deserve a family that will love you no matter what and and you know that sort of thing like you there are people in your life that will love you Mm -hmm. and you don't have to be right Whatever well, it is so that people think they need to be. He was like one of the original champions of children, right? Totally. In a, in a, but in a really, you know, pure way. Yeah, which is weird because, you know, as you watch him, you just kind of go, <laughs> you keep, and, and as I was watching the documentary, I kept waiting for that bombshell. Yeah. And there's none. And his wife's on it and his kids are on it. Yeah. And, uh, and it turns out 
it was just it was what he felt his calling was to do mm-hmm. and uh so he went off you know he went off there and then when 911 happened he came back and gave you know gave like some did oh, some videos see, I, for I that I don't remember that yeah I, I didn't either back. yeah huh. so um yeah so it's it's sorry go ahead well I do have to say uh, uh, well go ahead and wrap up and then I'll give you my little nugget okay um yeah so it's really good obviously everyone loves mr rogers as soon as you hear the voice it all comes back to you but seeing like the behind the scenes and his ideas and what it what it meant to him and how he was in his real life it's really worth it Uh so check it out it's on uh you can you know like amazon and all that stuff you can rent it whatever pay-per-view yeah cool well i'm I'm still gonna watch it even though yeah you watched it before i did yeah um, so I was, uh, bumping around YouTube the other night mm-hmm. and I found a video of him. So you remember Coco, the ape? That oh yeah. Robin that's Williams? on there. Oh, I was a mess. Yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah. was so sweet. The video he did mm-hmm. with Coco, that ape that Robin Williams befriended. Yeah. Oh, that's his sign was, language. Yeah. He yeah. like, Coco takes him in his arms and then starts saying, love you, and love he you. Was, he was not terrified, but he was way, he was well, scared. No one expected him to like cradle him like a baby. The ape, he, like cradled mr rogers yeah, like yeah, a baby truly yeah like, like a baby yeah and and he took his socks off yeah and then, yeah and he was like he was yeah of course you're freaking out he a little was bit. he was freaking out a little bit yeah and coco just kind of put him at ease mm-hmm. and, and just then, started saying you know, love you within like 30 seconds he was Ugh. he was back to mr rogers it but, was wonderful yeah it was really it it's was in really the documentary sweet. i was crying a bunch yeah i yeah. bet i bet totally okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of run through a few shows that I feel like I can talk about. Obviously, there's been a lot of new ones. I'm not going to talk about a bunch of them. Um, Fear of the Walking Dead just ended last week. So that was season, shoot, four or five. I can't remember. Um, the second half of the season was not as good as the first half of the season. Uh, they split them all up, but we ended in a good way uh, and they're all back together and it sounds like they're going to, it's going to be cool. I think next season's going to be pretty cool. So again, if you haven't been watching Fear the Walking Dead, this past season I think is worth it and you can definitely come in just on this season if you want and start there. Um, so check that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the no. first look i watched the first two i skipped the third one because i didn't like the characters well they killed off everyone i didn't like so now i really like everyone this year with jenna elfman garrett mm. dillahunt mm-hmm. those two together i love garrett dillahunt we'll watch him in anything so he's been fantastic um and and lenny morgan from walking dead switched over to fear the walking dead and so it's just been so much better with these new people and the people that that survived from the first few seasons yeah. um so it's really enjoyable um this weekend walking dead comes back and i can't wait okay did you did you ever figure out that woman that showed up that started just yeah she's dead now oh she is yeah good yeah i mean i only i like... love her look she's a tony winning actress she won uh the tony for carolina chain she's a great great singer and broadway actress i was only peripherally watching a handful of scenes from a couple shows while you had it on but i really did not like that woman well she was the villain so yeah you're not supposed to that's good yeah um and then new shows i thought we'd talk a little bit about the shows that we watched together just so people could know so you can be involved thank you so the good place is back awesome show if you guys are not did not see the first two seasons they're on netflix i think there's only 10 episodes a season go watch the first and second season it's one of the smartest shows sitcoms ever yeah Um, it's very clever it's so clever and we're two episodes now or actually three episodes now into this season and it's just as wonderful and and you know it's one of those shows where at the end of the first season they had this big reveal and everything switched up and you're like where is this gonna go now i think they screwed it up i think they don't know where they're going and it's good and then the second season was so wonderful and again it ended in a way i was like oh come on how is this gonna what are they gonna do now how is this gonna work yeah Yeah. and it's just again three episodes in so brilliant so clever yeah and the cast is so wonderful i mean there's there's nothing better than watching ted danson like this he's he's just so light and funny this is what he was designed Uh, for it's it really is so opposite of sam malone yeah but yeah but so perfect yep yeah um love love that show yeah uh a new show that you're actually you've watched the first two episodes with me is single parents yeah uh taryn Mm killam and brad um, garrett brad garrett and uh what's her face from gossip girl i I don't know the rest of them by name 
Yeah, sorry. I can't help you there, but it's a great show. Um, I hope it lasts. Uh, Leighton Meester, yeah, from... Uh, she was Blair Waldorf on... See, I can remember the <laughs> character names, but I can't remember her okay. name. On Gossip Girl. Um, and here's the thing. Yeah, it's very sweet. So it's all these single parents at a school that all their kids are in their class together. And so they all, like, help each other out watching the kids or... Um, you know, that's in their support system since they're all single parents. It's very funny. It's very sweet. But the kids yeah. are funny. Yeah, the kids are a big part of it. They And these are probably like six, seven, eight-year-old kids. I don't know. Yeah, yeah probably um, around there. And they really, they gave the kids good, <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> they did. And I really appreciate that because mm-hmm. we're so used to the kids being left out. And it's a good group of kids, too. So. Yeah. Um, so well, yeah, we're two and I hope it does really well too, because it's, it's enjoyable. I have this bad feeling. I do too. Cause everything is, we really like, oh, that it's, goes. it's going to be this year's me, myself and I, oh, that God, we just fell we're... in love with. It's a, it was really good, really sweet. And then they got rid of it. I don't know. I, I need to look not. up the ratings. I, I haven't even not. looked. Um, so yeah, single parents, it's ABC. Um, if you like these people, you'll like it. If you just like um a good sitcom that has like funny and feel good stuff mm-hmm. then you'll also like this yep yeah um the other one that you're still watching with me is i feel bad which we've yes. talked about a few times yep it's still cute it yeah. hasn't like it's not a must see for me like i don't feel like it's really hard for me to to wait for you to watch shows mm-hmm. and this one so far i haven't like you haven't had a problem i haven't waiting. had a problem waiting <laughs> it's enjoyable yeah. Yeah. But something needs, so there's something that has to like pick up or, or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's really, I don't, yeah, I can't put my finger on it. I'm trying, I, I want to like it. Yeah. And I do like and it's it. it's good people. Yeah. There's just something, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a little, I don't, you know what I think bugs me the most? Hmm. Uh, her parents, how they always try to have the mom be condescendingly witty that's very it's they're being very stereotypical with that yeah well it's not working for me um i know that that uh i'll I'll just say that i i I, there's something about the it seems forced that like a forced dynamic there with the parents that they just always have to appear in a scene and the mom always has to say something like that and that you know and that's that's a trap that a lot of sitcoms fall into you know it's kind of like formula or something yeah it definitely is like think of blackish you know with his mom always popping in but 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 it works on there it it is either she's a much better actor or it's written better (laughs) or something for sure well and i think she's a better actor I yeah I don't know I think I think they are it's it's a fine line for them they're walking with a stereotype where Blackish is living in it you know like it's very real mm-hmm. um, and I think on some level I feel bad is still living in some stereotypes either with with the main characters ethnicity I think also with a married couple they're still dealing with that whole thing where remember I was complaining about the husband being that same old he doesn't help out at all type thing. You know, so I think there's just a lot of that going on. Even the guys that she works with feel stereotypical now. And it's just kind of like, I don't know. I felt I, I, I want something either real or out of the box or I don't know what it is. But mm. um, I'm still going to keep watching until I absolutely just, you know, something has to go really wrong. It's, it's not a bad show. Right. I mean, we're not talking bad about it. It just we're, we're wanting to like it. Yeah. And, and it's just it shows glimpses. Right. 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 It's just not fully there like, right. you know, a blackish or. Exactly you know yeah a will and grace or something like that yeah speaking of will and grace came back last night thank god (laughs) um and david schwimmer was on it he was fantastic um of course jack stole the show with his numbing cream on his face yeah um but uh (laughs) i'm just so glad the show's back it's it's the best so we started out watching it together i haven't watched a first run episode of will and grace and probably well since the first time they were on easily um and I saw, I watched this one. So you left, mm-hmm. you went away and finished watching it on your own. And I finished watching it on my own. Mm. And it was good. It was really it's funny. so it was, good. Yeah. And <laughs> and I think I thought David Schwimmer was a nice little like. He's going to be a good addition. addition yeah. For now. Yeah. I well, think... I don't know what else is going on with the show. If it, if it has an over, overarching theme, you know, if, if there's anything going on that he would 
you know, mess up or whatever, but he seems like a good addition, a good love interest for, for, now. for Grace. Yeah. I don't know that he, I don't think he should stick around for long. <laughs> Um, cause they just work better when they're all doing their single thing, you know? Okay. Um, anyway. Yep. Um, and then the only other s- s- new show I wanted to touch on is a million little things. Um, I'm still like, so this is one of those shows that's kind of that guilty pleasure show. Like I can't really say like, Oh, it's just great. This was ABC's answer to this is us. Like we need to have a tear oh, jerker show. show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, is that they made, they overdid it. So Ron Livingston kills himself and it's the group of friends that then are dealing with it. So, so that's the first thing, right? That's sad enough. Okay. Um, it's a great cast. There's a chick on the chick that she, he was married to was on a show called Satisfaction on USA a few years ago. I really like the show. She's good. The lead dude from uh, Psych, that mm-hmm. show with Dooley Hill, mm-hmm. uh, he's good in it. The lead guy that was on Grimm, he's good. I don't know any of these people's names, but I watched them. Um, Romany uh, Malco, is that his name, from Weeds? Um, don't know him. You do. He was the... Uh, you do. Okay. Um, I'll take your word for yeah, it. Yeah, so he's good. Isn't James LeSueur on there? Who? James LeSueur from uh, uh, Las Vegas. Remember remember the show Las Vegas with Josh Dumel? You're confusing Romany for him. Oh. I, so, but he's in another show, isn't he? I know he's back on television because I was... He's been on so many things over the years, you know, okay. just consistently. Because I, so. I like him. I thought this was the show he was coming back for, but maybe not. No. Well, obviously not. Um. Yeah, so it's a great cast, but then they just went overboard. So there's the suicide, and then one of the women has cancer, and someone else is, you know, there's then, like, another one is having, another one of the friends is having an affair with Ron Livingston's wife, who's now the widow. And, like, so there's all this drama, which I, I can be okay with. But then they went and when Ron Livingston, like he jumped out over the, he jumped off the balcony of his office and his assistant was there. Well, she's doing some kind of devious thing. Like he left behind paperwork for his wife and um, she took it and like she deleted stuff off of his computer and then he left like all this other stuff in the house and she went and found it. Like it's, it's actually making me angry that she's hiding stuff from the wife and from these friends and stuff so there's all this drama where i can be sad and then whenever this pops up i'm like what is up with this chick and why is she hiding things from people um so i don't look i am enjoying it in the level that i don't have to think and you know i can just kind of sit back and i do tear up sometimes like this week the daughter had a father daughter recital that had to happen. And so these guys were stepping up. Mm -hmm. Um, So like there were four best friends. And so, you know, these other guys were stepping up um, to dance with the daughter, you know, so of course Mm -hmm. there's those moments and those are really well done. Um, It's just, you know, they definitely went overboard and let's really give it to you guys. You know what I mean? So it's fine. And I like it. And as long as it's on, I'll probably keep watching it because I really like the people in it. Mm -hmm. Um, The girl that has breast cancer is uh, the assistant from Go On, Matthew Perry's assistant. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I really like her. Oh, man. Um, So it's a great cast. It's just, you know, um, if you, it it can be a lot to to take I mean, here, okay. So I'm not the TV aficionado that you are, right? Here's my problem with that. That's, that's everyday life i'm watching tv to be entertained <laughs> you to do take me sure away, to take me away from everyday life and if it's art imitating life i don't want to watch that but then why do you watch anything because everything is art. i mean you, you watch know. you watch that i watch that because if there's too much of it i won't watch it i just don't watch it if there's some of that i can take that if there are a series of happy endings or enough so happy endings why do you like west wing <clears throat> That was real life. There was a lot of drama there. Because it's clever and it's sharp. <laughs> so yeah. it has to be clever and sharp. And that can have... be real life, but <clears throat> not... Depressing. Not depressing. Okay. So that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This guy kills himself. This person has cancer. This, you know, that's depressing. I have friends going through yeah, all of that. I'm not asking you to watch it. Well, I'm just, you know, I mean, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. That's the beauty of all of this stuff. 
I mean, right. it's it's look, I watch Grey's Anatomy for 15 years now and every week I cry. It's it just there's some shows, you know, that that's going to happen. And This Is Us is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this show, it's trying too hard. But I'm, I, you know, I like that, though. I okay. like I like what's going on enough to keep watching it. But it is okay. trying too hard. OK, um, so it'll. I'll be surprised if it makes Last? it. Yeah, yeah, I will be because okay. I don't. I think people are gonna get tired of all of that really quickly. Well, you know, it's pretty so. obvious it's a show trying to be ABC's answer to this yeah. is us. Yeah, of course. And it has to work better than. And if it doesn't, yeah. then it's not worth it because it, there's already this is us. Right, and it can't. I mean, you know, it just can't. This is us was just done so <clears throat> cleverly from the start. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. So then I just want to talk about the new shows that are starting this week. So there's a lot of returning shows. Like I said, The Walking Dead, Doctor Who starts on Sunday, I believe, with Jodie Whittaker, the first female female Doctor Doctor Who. Who. Go, Jodie. Very exciting. I love her from Broadchurch. Yep. Um, And then all my CW shows, well, not all of them, but most of them come back this week. The Flash, Mm. Riverdale, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Um there's a new show on CW called All American that's a true story of a football player that lived here in Compton and then he like got moved to like a Beverly Hills school or something so it's a story of his life so yeah it looks interesting. So Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is this when uh um what's his face starts now? Skylar Aston. Skylar Aston? Aston? Yeah. yeah. All right. He'll be on this season. This is their last season. Oh, I'll Sad. watch it. Um and then new shows are a Netflix show, Haunting of Hill House, is a scary show. Looks nope, good. Nope. Um, Amazon Prime has the Romanoff starting this week, which is like everyone from Mad Men and then everyone from everything else. I mean, the cast is insane, and it's it's Matthew Weiner's new show. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks like it's going to be a good one. So let's hope. Okay. Um, and then the guys who run the podcast Pod Save America also have a show starting. They're going to do I think four or five weekly shows up into the midterm elections and it's called pod save america um and they're gonna tape it on the day that it's airing so that everything is as up to date as possible and just kind of letting everyone uh guiding everyone through the midterms and stuff speaking of which i think four weeks from this coming tuesday yeah i think it is four episodes yeah um so that's it for this week um so now we'll get through the actor's corner as quickly as possible uh, because of A Star is Born, we are going. We have picked uh, Bradley Cooper. Yep. So here we go. Uh, movie I love. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not ready. I, ha- I have to get to uh, pull it up on my screen here. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, Alex, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> movie I love. Uh, okay, so I actually had a harder time with this than I thought. Um, it could have gone a lot of different directions, but I ended up with Guardians of the Galaxy. That, really yeah yeah because huh. of rocket's attitude and okay yeah first one much better than the second one um yes. okay i chose the hangover and when i went through all of his movies i was like you know what that's just it's just it's the one i'm always gonna go to so that's what i chose yeah okay okay movie i like the hangovers <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i don't uh, put two and three in there no, no well not for me. just the I, first one. I only do because it well yeah okay yeah no, so i guess uh, unless specifically announced that it's one of the sequels all of the good ones are the originals right, right? so just take it Except as for halloween the hangover yeah um i chose wedding crashers he plays the yeah. best douche in oh, the world he's yeah. such a jerk yeah he's right up there and he's good yeah yeah and it's yeah. just great movie yeah uh movie i hate american hustle me too did you ever see that i saw enough of it to hate it (laughs) (laughs) i feel bad saying i hate it it it, i didn't need to watch it again here's the thing i uh, i think i'm done with and i didn't really even give them a shot but i think i'm done with that type that that you know the big short and the american hustle and that sort of thing and i think it's the same person doing completely different movies and no the big short was uh adam adam mckay adam mckay and david o russell's american hustle okay who's doing the new one with um christian bale as dick cheney that's adam that's the big short that's gonna be just like that the big short was great the big short was good it was good it wasn't quite what i wanted it to be american hustle was so different it had nothing even to do with that are you thinking of a different movie i probably i think so yeah i I hated it so much i'm lumping in it was probably something i liked movie i secretly love (laughs) silver linings playbook Really? Yeah. Well, see, that's another David O. Russell. He did both yeah. of those. Yeah. 
Silver, Silver Lake's play, playbook was good, but um, I chose the A team. I freaking love that oh movie. Oh my god! I thought for sure you're gonna say all, all about Steve. I I do love that one, but yeah. I think it's more of a secret that I love the A team. I and I thought he was great in it. All of them were so good in that. I I really really enjoyed that. Okay. I wish they had done another okay. one. Okay. All right. Uh, embarrassed to say I haven't seen Alias. Ugh, I, I just know. found out tonight. That he was in it? it. That he was in it. Oh my gosh. So, so Jennifer, now we can watch it? So yes, we can watch <gasps> Alias. So I'm giving Jennifer Garner a chance. Uh for, I've had I've had a chip on my shoulder for Jennifer Garner for a long, long time. So long and to the point that I'm not even sure why yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go watch it. Okay, bye. <laughs> thanks for thanks for tuning in. Click. Okay, see you later. Okay. <laughs> um mine is American Sniper. And I'm not really embarrassed that I haven't seen it, except for that it's a Clint Eastwood movie, and I love the movies he directs. But I, I just, I, it was one of those that I knew uh, I have never been in the mood to watch. So that's interesting. I'm not going to try to unpack that right here, but that's interesting. Okay. Because you tend to like those. I know. But those movies. Yeah, but, I know. Huh. Interesting. Um, and add to your watch list. The series Limitless. Okay, so he's barely on the series. I, I know yeah. he's a senator that okay. only appears yeah. a couple times. And he was times. the producer, really. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. But but I I liked the movie with him. Yes. Right? The um, series was good. The that's kid what in I, it was good. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And that's why I'm adding it to my office. Yeah. The kid on that is now Murphy Brown's son on Murphy Brown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, mine was The Mule, which is a new Clint Eastwood directed <laughs> movie. That's coming out, I think, next month. Um, and, you know, look, I did not like Clint Eastwood up until about 15 years ago. And now all these movies, starting with Gran Torino, I just, I love him in. And in this Mule movie, I don't, I don't even know really what's going on, but it looks good by the trailer and I'm looking forward to watching it. I thought he said he was stopping doing movies. No, Robert Redford is. After no, this. I know that. But that's oh, recent. No. I thought Clint Eastwood said a few years ago, I'm done. I don't think so. Like after he talked to the empty chair on the <laughs> yeah. stage, I thought I don't he said, you know so. what, I'm done. Not that I know of. Maybe it was wishful thinking. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So so that's our list. I'm just going to go through the honorable mentions. Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. Oh, my I kn- gosh. I knew that was going to be on there somewhere oh, for you. Love, love, love. The mm-hmm. series, love the movies, everything. Mm-hmm. There's two movies in a whole series. Mm-hmm. Um, Failure to launch. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. yeah. Can always watch it. You said Alias. All about Steve. We've talked about that before. <laughs> yeah. We talked about Sandra Bullock. Yeah. It's fun. It got a people. Bad, it gets a bad rap. Yeah. Valentine's Day. I love his story when he's on the plane yeah. with Julia Roberts. Yeah. And, you know. Oh, love that. Um, Limitless, the movie, was so good. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, and then we talked about Silver Linings, Guardians. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, look, when you go through this and you see everything from kind of Alias to him doing Rocket and, and you know, and now doing this, A Star is Born. I mean, what a guy. And yeah. I love still the whole SNL thing where they showed him being the student on Inside the Actor Studio mm-hmm. year after year after year. And so mm-hmm. I always go back to that. And I'm like, dude, this guy was just you know, a student and truly still is obviously, and just has been learning and getting better and better and better. Yeah. And I'm so happy for him. I just got to throw out an honorable mention. You need to go. It's probably on uh, the official website for the tonight show with <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. You need to go look at all of his, all his of his visits, visits with Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon because something about those two together, they just start they, cracking up and they lose it. They barely finish oh an interview. God, they, it's a, it's just the funniest yeah, thing to watch. It's the best. And the last one, it turns out it's kind of pivotal to, to yeah, Stars, Stars Born, Born. Where, where they put on the... Um, crazy hair the crazy hair with the visors and started doing and, and bradley started doing air, air guitar. guitar yeah that whole visit it is was just great. it's just one of the best ever yeah yeah for sure so go check those out definitely mm-hmm. okay we went kind of long today but making up for last week when we didn't even that's do this. right that's yeah. right yeah and there was just so much to unpack with a star is born so it really was anyway um so yeah we're back hopefully back for weekly for a while now Mm -hmm. um so yeah check us out watchingmystories.com follow us on instagram twitter and facebook yep and we will be back next week there's a lot to watch a lot going on there's a lot going on 
a lot. A lot of stories to watch. So until then, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.